This week's game of the week is Buck, a 2D post-apocalyptic dog simulator. Buck is a 2D metroidvania, meaning it's full of deep and winding environments, full of all kinds of details and little things that are easy to miss. You're going to have to collect power-ups and new weapons as you progress, but why exactly are you progressing and, and what's going on anyway? Who are you? Why are you? What are you doing here? You're not my doctor. The titular Buck is a dog, and he's also a mechanic at a motorcycle garage. At least, he was, until he decided to throw his life behind him and discover the truth behind the mysterious disappearance of a girl, who's presumably also a dog, which would make her, that's right, a Basset Hound. That joke worked better in my head. But it's also the end of the world, so you'll have to kill a whole bunch of other dogs on your quest through a series of junkyards, mountain passes, ghost towns, and survivor settlements which are also probably junkyards. But hey, they're dogs, what do they care? What I like about this campaign is that it's taking a different approach to the post-apocalyptic setting that's become really oversaturated in gaming lately. It's a 2D metroidvania, which is nice and different for the setting, but it also stars at first glance a seemingly adorable cast of dogs. We're all monsters now, of course. It really reminds me of those old mascot PS2 platformers, which makes me wish this were a 3D game so I could pretend like it was one of those, but I can't fault the game for that. Or can I? This is the game's second Kickstarter, actually, the first coming about two years ago, and you can really see the difference. The game has come a long way since its first rough attempt, with a ton of polish and refined gameplay on offer in screenshots and videos. Best of all, there's a playable demo for everyone to play, which wasn't there the first time either. If nothing else, Buck is a great example for other developers who might have failed their first Kickstarter campaign and are seeking to give it a second chance. If there's anything negative to be said, it's that the story doesn't sound all that special on the surface. You play one kidnapped girl game, you've played them all. The developers, Wave Interactive, might have gone a little overboard with the rewards as well, offering all kinds of physical stuff that ends up costing quite a pretty penny. They've got the budget all planned out, putting 10% of the funding towards rewards, but 10% of 30,000 is still a lot that can be put into the game. Probably. Hold on to me. Okay, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, especially considering the other 30% that'll be going towards taxes and fees. But why not head over there and take a look at the page for yourself? It's seeking $30,000 and is already a third of the way there so far after its first week. Check it out, you never know what you... Uh, that, uh, that, that's a good ending, I think.